Once upon a time, there was a town called Aeropolis, which housed not only human beings, but also aerosols. What is it? It's a rock, a peak, a cape. No, it is a particle, a tiny grain or a droplet surrounded by gas, which lives in the atmosphere. In Aeropolis, there are two families of aerosols, the primary and the secondary ones. What differentiates them is not their passions, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Nor their math skills. I believe that two and two make four, General, and four and four make eight. Nor the size of their nose. Why not, if you please, why not stare? But how they formed. The primary ones, directly emitted in the atmosphere in the form of particles, come from natural sources and human activities. The natural sources are soils, pollen, salt from the sea, and sometimes volcanoes. In town and around Aeropolis, the human activities which are sources of particles are certain industries, road traffic, old wood burning stoves, the burning of green waste, some agricultural practices, etc. These sources of primary particles also emit large quantities of gases. Once they cool, these gases are transformed into secondary particles. This is what we call nucleation. These secondary particles, which are very small, will grow by sticking to each other. This phenomenon is called coagulation. Once these particles are mixed together in the atmosphere, they travel with the wind and clouds over continents. We were 500, but with swift support, grew to 3,000 as we reached the port. For example, some particles generated in Aeropolis can go to France, Germany. Da stehe ich nun, ich arme Tor, und bin so klug als wie zuvor. Italy. Peri interi oxidi, quo curam, quo non curam. Russia, Buďte svobodný, jak větr. China, Japan, the Kabuki, and even to the United States of America. I like to be in America. Okay, buy me in America. Everything's free in America for a small fee in America. This means that in town. The particles we breathe can be from here or from abroad. During their travels in the atmosphere, our particles can also come across gas molecules. When this happens, some of these molecules can catch and surround the particles. This phenomenon is called condensation. The specific nature of water vapor, the most common gas on Earth, is that it transforms into liquid water when it touches the particles. This is how clouds are formed. Our particles do not only make rain or storms, oh despair, oh age, my enemy. They also have a significant impact on our health and our environment. Another glorious day. When we breathe, particles, depending on their size, enter more or less deeply into our respiratory system. Some particles, especially the biggest ones, get stuck in the upper part, namely in the nasal cavity, the pharynx, and the trachea. The others, which come from coagulation and thus mainly from human activities, can go further into our lungs, our blood, and even our cells. Depending on their chemical composition, these particles are more or less toxic for our health. They can cause diseases related to breathing, such as bronchitis, pneumonia, asthma, cardiovascular diseases and cancer. Plants, crops and materials are not spared either. The chemical composition of particles and the amount of clouds they form also influence the temperature of our planet. Take black carbon, for example. It is a particle made of carbon, which is black, and produced by combustion. When it is not in our lungs, it is on the walls of our buildings. It is what makes them grey and dirty. As we know, black retains heat, and so does black carbon. The more of it there is in the atmosphere, the more the atmosphere heats up. The other particles are mostly composed of sulfates and nitrates. Unlike black carbon, they cool the atmosphere. Why? Well, because they act like little flying beach umbrellas, which protect us against sunbeams. 
Between cooling and warming, we still do not know exactly what the overall effect of all these particles together in the atmosphere will be. This is why researchers continue to search and science continues to progress. But as we can see, there are far too many particles in the air of Aeropolis. By reducing those generated by our activities, we can act for our health and our environment. This is why ADEM develops actions to decrease polluting emissions, stimulate and support the action of public and private stakeholders, and encourage us to change our habits to consume more wisely, save energy, and consequently reduce pollution. Thanks to such measures, and with everyone's efforts, the quality of the air will improve, our planet will be healthier, and so will we. All the world's a stage, and all the men, women and particles merely players. <laughs>